having an amazing time since um, morning. In fact, for those of us that came in yesterday, it was, it's been wonderful. I want to thank Damola and Emmy. The hospitality has been amazing. Um, we're so rested, all of us, the team, and uh, we're so glad to be here. I would feel very, very, very welcome, and it helps the flow of God's grace upon our lives. I ask that God's hand will continue to multiply upon you, grant you speech, and grant you elevation in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, for the entire team, the King's Arrow, and even the tribe of the marketplace, you're going places indeed. God bless you. Um, Richie, I told him, I said I would steal him to my house. <laughs> and he said, no problem, he'll follow me. <laughs> you know, when he began to minister, it was, it was so um, wonderful. The portals began to open. That's what a minstrel does. The portals open and you begin to see visions. That's what was happening with me, you know? So many visions, so many confirmations. And um, we had him minister in the morning. And he looked as if Damola didn't minister, but he ministered. He came and I saw him taking her, her laptop setting it up for her, her iPad, you know? And I was like, really? You know? <laughs> I don't know how many of you saw that in the morning. And he wasn't, it was like, you know, that's a normal thing with him. I could just see the friendship between them beyond being husband and wife. I could see the friendship. Please sustain it. It's a beautiful thing to look at. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and her session was wonderful. There was a lot of paradigm shift for a whole lot of people. It wasn't looking like a, you know, a King's Arrows conference. It was like <laughs> everybody was, I think that was the, you know, and, um, you know, Anguli came and then she drove in the hammer deeper into the head of Caesarea. Hallelujah. And it was just amazing. <laughs> you know, it's been a wonderful time indeed. And the service here has been just beautiful. Our instrumentalists, the Lord bless you. You're just so wonderful. Everyone has been fine. The ushers, we give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, shall we pray? In Jesus' name. Lord, we give you praise and glory. Thank you for how far you've um, run with us in this meeting. And we ask that your mighty hand will continue with us. By your word tonight, snatch some from the gates of hell. Snatch many from the hands of the enemy. Restore people into their ordinations in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. I, I believe the Lord will help us tonight in Jesus' name. Um, I just want to say, I have quite a number of things to say, and I trust that the Lord will give me um, coordination, but if it doesn't come in a coordinated matter, manner, just let God give you grace to understand. Um, first of all, I want to say that like three weeks ago, the Lord began to bring emphasis to the fact that he was releasing portions to people, and those portions, they were comprised of taking our places um, in destiny. And those portions also involved people um, sometimes even being allocated territories. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. So some people were being allocated territories. And it was such that the territories that were being allocated was not necessarily where you were living, where domicile. People were some people in Nigeria were being allocated places in Ghana. They were being allocated places in, you know, like you could be in Abuja, and the territory that God allocates for you, your portion is somewhere in Port Harcourt. And one man can have as many portions. And that's, you know, scriptures will say one man will be given like 10 cities to rule over. So that was, that came like three weeks ago. That was the emphasis of the spirit. And for some people, it was taking your place in, you know, there's a, the marketplace, Whatsoever God has put in your hand to do, he was asking you to take your place. You take your place in the internet space. If God is calling you into, you know, um, 
that dimension of ministration, he was asking people because he came like, uh, you know, I was in my room and then suddenly the Spirit of God said, you know Joshua was the one that divided portions. I said, yes. And he said, this, Jesus is a type, um, Joshua is a type of Jesus. So there's a division of portions going on. And I was like, okay. So um, that's just to bring perspective to what I'm going to say to Emi and Damola. And then, you know, a few days ago, the Lord began to speak again. And he said, you know, before the speaking, I was at Akure to minister. And then I saw a vision of feet moving. People's feet were just moving. And then um, I was wondering. And then when I came down to Benue, I had a dream where people were relocating with their families. They were carrying loads, children. It was a, like Exodus, the way Exodus would look like. And I'm like, okay, so what's going on? And the Lord begins to tell me the story, remind me of Abraham's story in Acts chapter 7. The Bible says God spoke to Abraham. That was Stephen's rendition. He said God spoke to Abraham when he was at awe of the Chaldees. And then he took his journey. And when he took his journey, Terah went with him. And Terah died at Karan because they all had to stop in, you know, in Haran. And that stopping, I think historians say, was like 50 years where Abraham was delayed in his journey. And then God showed mercy again. And then he said, that's why in Genesis 12, we say, now the Lord said to Abraham. That was the second speaking unto Abraham. And the Lord said, the emphasis again for those people in this season is that, you know, some of us don't have to wait for Terah to die. You need to move. You need to move. Terah has delayed you on your journey, but you need to move. You don't have 50 years like Abraham. Abraham was our progenitor, so God could play with time. I don't know who around here, maybe except our daughter here. We don't have the luxury of that 50 years. Is somebody listening to me tonight? So you need to, God, there's an, there's, what I hear in the spirit is movements, transitions. People are, God is catapulting people into, you know, their next moves. And so wherever you are now, if you are marking time, you are actually wasting time. Because your movement will affect other people's movement. When Abraham moved eventually, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, he went to, um, you know, uh, Canaan. And even when he went to Canaan, you discover that in that story there was a lot of movement. You know, he had his, he had, um, his children, he had um, Isaac. And then um, we, you, you come to the story of uh, Jacob. Jacob now has his children. And then there was one man moving. And that one man moving was called Joseph. It looked like slavery, but it was a transport fair that was to transport him to his place of royalty and the promise of God in his life. So sometimes the difficulties that we face, the impossibilities that we face, the rejection you are facing is actually the ticket to where you are going to be the prime minister, the things that God has spoken over your life. That's the only way it's going to play out. Somebody listening to me tonight. Hallelujah. So there are many transitions in the spirit. There are some of us that are residents, you know, maybe in Abuja, in, in, in Kaduna, in Benue. Yeah, that may be your place of residence, but there is a movement in the realm of the spirit. There's, there's a movement. God is taking you beyond where you are now. You, you could stay in that location as your base, but actually there's a lot of transitions going on. People are being catapulted into purpose and destiny. So your spirit man needs to be open to hear the instruction that God is giving. So this one man moves, and then later another, you know, um, Jacob with a whole family moves again. And it's a season of movements. On why I'm describing all this is that your situation could fall into one of the movements. Some people are moving with their children. Some are moving alone, and it looks like slavery. And then after 400 years plus 30 of a little delay, a nation is born. A nation is born, and the prophecy given to Abraham is fulfilled, and they are now moving again as an exodus into the place of promise. So for different kinds of people in the house, there is a movement going on. I don't know which one is yours. Locate it, but by all means, move. And while I was giving that word, the thing I heard, the word I heard in my spirit was accelerate. Tell your neighbor, accelerate. Some of you are on gear one, gear two, but the Holy Ghost says accelerate. Sometimes it's not that you're not moving, but it's like change gears, move. And God bless you if your car is an automatic car. All you need to do is just press on and you'll see yourself take off to the glory of God. Amen. So, why... One of the reasons I said that was the fact that um, 
Emmy and Damola are also fulfilling that movement all the way from US, they're coming here. And they're coming here is, you have a portion in Nigeria. And that portion will involve so many people's lives and destinies. And while the worship was going on, it became clear to me some of your assignments that God has called you to do. During the course of both the King's Arrows Conference and you know, subsequently as we have the tribe, um, tribe of the marketplace, you're going to find, number one, a lot of enthronements going on. People will be enthroned in their destiny. That's why it's important for people to move because when you don't move to the location, a lot of people are trapped in what is God's purpose for them. You know, the movement of all of, of, all of these people we have described, you know, it opened up people into their purposes. So, so many enthronements will be going on. So, why our brother, Minister uh, Pastor Richie was singing, that was happening in an explosive manner. Not many knew what was happening to them, but you will live here and not, not understanding the fact that you have been given a throne. You have been enthroned into a place where God wants you to rule. Right now, it may not, you may not look like it. But something explosive has happened here. And it's not just here, it's going to be in the course of conferences as, you know, the Lord um, orchestrates by the hand of his um, servants. Praise the Lord. And enthronements, there'll be crowns that'll be released because a lot of people have labored, they've come to that place where they wanted, they, they, uh, it's a time for them to receive their crown. But they, there was no atmosphere, there was no occasion. And it was when Anguli was preaching that that word was confirmed. You know, she said, the man and the oil. So you are also acting as Samuels. God says to say to you, you are king makers. You know, you're king makers. And that's why, you know, your name is not, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, you know just a coincidence. You are king makers. So when you come, the kingship dimension in people, you stir it up and you bring it. So if she wasn't just preaching, she was actually prophesying so people will receive their mandates and throwmen they'll be crowned they will also receive scepters to rule because there are some people that are already crowned they already have a throne but the scepter that gives them the authority to rule is not yet in their hands so as we gather in these meetings both for the king's arrow and the tribe of the marketplace that will be happening a whole lot of the time people will be given scepters of power scepters of wealth to go rule in the midst of your enemy it's not to go play with the enemy. It's to rule. Rule in the midst of your enemy. So that's the charge that the Lord will be releasing to many of us as he, by his mercies, moves us forward into the things that he has prepared for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have enthronement, we have crownings, and uh, we have scepters um, released to people. So if you are in this meeting, ensure that by the grace of God, you don't live here without some of these things happening to you. And then over the night, I had a dream, and um, we're at this meeting, but it wasn't this venue, but I just knew it was this meeting. And then suddenly, there was someone whose promotion had been delayed, and it's, it's where he was a military officer. His promotion had been delayed, but when he was in the setup of this meeting, that suddenly, it's like his name was called up for promotion. And it's like the promotion had delayed for long. And suddenly, I don't know, you know how dreams are, there was this, Cord, this red cord. Now that I think of it, I, I, I was wondering what that red cord is, but you know it's the blood. A scarlet thread. It was a thread. A scarlet thread that held all of us together as we held him as he walked into his place of glory. Hallelujah. You know, like you've come to that place, your whatever has delayed you for long, the time has come. And tonight, I want to announce to somebody that your time has come. Amen. I don't know what's been delaying in your life. There will be suddenly, suddenly, something will just, you know, break out on your behalf and in your behalf, and you see yourself taking your place. Um, I also saw the fact that there was a vacancy. There was a vacancy, and everyone was waiting to see who would fill that vacancy. It was someone who nobody expected. Nobody expected. You know, in this kind of meetings, people would just be like, where? They can be saying all that. It can't be for me. It can't be, you know, it's those kind of people that God is looking at. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's looking at those kind of people. People that nobody is expecting, but you are the one. Just like I said, it wasn't just administration, you know, because it was confirming the dream that I had. So that's going to be happening in a lot of 
scale as the meetings go on. So many people will be entering into their ordinations. They'll be entering into their ordinations. Amen. And when we say ordination, it doesn't have to be one big thing because in this service, that's why when she said for us to dance, Minister Wumi, I just know we're dancing to the king, we're dancing about our ordinations, we're dancing about crown. When, when such occasions take place, you know what happens usually? There's a huge celebration. And that's what was going on. For me, that was what I was dancing, you know, for the next level I'd entered because when uh, um, Pastor Anguli was ministering and she was prophesying. I told her much later, I said, ah, you were saying some things to me. You were saying some things to me. Praise the Lord. So you are just in the right place. It's a season that God is going to um, bring promotion. And then in that dream, I just saw suddenly a whole lot of people will meet me in the dream and say, you are so beautiful. And I was knowing it in the, in, in the inside of me. And the scripture that came to me was, you know, the beauty of our Lord God will be upon you. There's a beauty that God will put upon you that you will be admired, and that admiration will draw people to the Lord. May the beauty of our Lord God be upon you. And that beauty will attract people to the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, while we're traveling to, uh, for this meeting from Binwe, um, our hosts were so gracious. They came to pick us all the way from Binwe. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them for me. Hallelujah. Uh, that clap, please. Your hand is not borrowed. I appreciate God on their behalf. Um, the scripture that kept coming to me over the king's arrow. Meanwhile, Psalm 45 is a scripture that it, um, it's the scripture that is the um, interpretation of my life. My life, my ministry, and all of that. So when I kept, uh, the, this scripture kept coming to me where we're driving in the bus. Psalm 45, verse 5, it says, Thy arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. King's daughters are among thy honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in a cold of... Oh, king's daughters is actually our own um, version of the sisters, you know. So, but it says, everyone that is a king arrow, God will shoot you into the heart of the enemy. Every, every king's arrow here. Let me see the king's arrows here. Hallelujah. Let me see the king's arrow. I, yeah, I thought I wanted brothers to raise their hands. That's actually, yeah. You are a king's arrow. You say, thy arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemy. So you are king's arrows, whereby the people fall under thee. So God will be shooting a whole lot of you into purpose, into destiny, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And um, the, there's um, this scripture that God is going to, whoever brought that out up is very spiritual. I mean, in the spirit, sorry. Verse 9 is one place I, I heard when I was sitting here. Okay, sorry, verse 10. It says, Hacking, O daughter. Hacking. Hacking means listening. Consider and incline your ear. Forget also thy own people and thy father's people and thy father's house, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord. Worship thou him. There are some people that God will be expecting you in this season to say goodbye to, I don't know how to put it without sounding terrible. There are familiar things, things that bring you comfort. Say goodbye. He said, forget your father's people. Forget, you know, you know, incline. The, the, the instruction is first incline your ear, consider and incline thy ear. Forget also thy own people and thy father's house. Okay, those are the two things. Forget your people. I don't know who are your people. And then your father's house. So, shall, there's one condition for the king desiring your beauty. There is, there's, there's a beauty that you carry, but it only comes out when you have said goodbye to some things. That's what happened to Abraham too. Say, leave your father's house, and I will show you. So there are things that you're familiar with, there are things that you're comfortable with. God will have you say no to them in this season. And sometimes they may be difficult. I hope you know it was not easy for Abraham to walk away from, you know, where was his roots and everything that he ever knew. This instruction may not be for everyone, but God is calling a few people. I, when I sat down there, I heard that verse of scripture, and I believe that by the mercies of God, as you obey, the king will be pleased with your beauty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. And, you know, Damola just reminds me of my husband who just literally keeps pushing me forward. I was so disappointed when I went to tell him that the Lord said I should begin, begin ministry. I really thought he would be like, <laughs> me what? Please, you know, go and sit down. I was disappointed when he said, oh, I've been waiting for you to hear my, yourself. I, I, I know it. I just wanted you to hear it by yourself. I was really very disappointed. I thought he would discourage me and, you know, you understand that kind of thing. You are looking for somebody to help you. And then, you know, he just pushes you forward. He's such an amazing man. We came together, but something came up and he had to rush off to um, Abu uh, sorry, Lagos. Trust God that he'll be back tomorrow. He's been a very, very strong encouragement. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you very much for celebrating him. And if he's watching, the Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so that's, that's just the message for um, the host. Amen. And I believe um, the rest of us also were blessed by one of the two things the, the Lord spoke to them. Amen. Um, I've been wondering what to title my message, but the word came to me, I mean the topic was, became clear to me as all of the messages were going on. And I would title my topic, War on the Seed. War on the Seed. Amen. Um, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, um, it talks about the seed there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 uh, media, can you bring it up? Please help me with scriptures so that um, I'd, we run with. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Amen. So the seed, the seed is the plan of divinity for continuing itself. It's plan of divinity for continuing itself. So inside of the seed is the image of the tree. In fact, for God, the seed is you and I. His image is inside of us. So the seed is not just a plan for divinity to continue. It's also the potential of the next phase of divinity's kingship. So no matter how small it is, it's their potential for the next phase. They have a, they, 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 if you find out, read through scriptures, you find that there are dispensations, there are, you know, God has this plan, he has his plan, things planned out in phases. So when he wants to start, he starts with a seed. This is my next phase, so he comes with a seed. Amen. The seed is also... Um, the dominion mandate in process. Wherever you see the seed is the dominion mandate. It may look like something small, but it's going through a process where it will blossom into. I'm bringing all of these definitions so you understand whether the seed that God gave you is in human form or is in the form of the idea, on an idea, something you are betting, you will not look down on it. It may look so small, like just a single drop of an idea, but it's something that is going to at the end of the day, take over and dominate because what the seed does was already captured in Genesis, from Genesis 1 verse 26. It multiplies, it, it replenishes, no matter how small it is, when it grows into the fullness of what it's supposed to be, that's what it will do. Whether it's an idea, whether it's a business, whether it's a ministry, whatsoever is proceeding from God is a seed that will, you know, dominate. Yeah, and he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion and all of that, you know, subdue. So, um, yeah, the seed is the divine power and the glory at its beginning. It's the divine power and glory. The Bible says Jesus is the express image of the Father. But you know, a point came, he was just a seed in the womb of Mary. But when he was done and come to the place of his fullness, the Bible says he's the express image of the Father. Um, why did I go to define all of this? I'm just kind of like continuing the message, perhaps from where Emmy took it in the morning, you know? 
when Satan came and just was like, um, um, what did, why, 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 why would he say he shouldn't eat? Why, 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 what, was, what, what, what did he have in mind? So the aim at the end of the day, it wasn't just that you know, Satan was working haphazardly. He had a plan. And the plan was to distort the seed. Because what happens is that whenever there is, you take away the original pattern, the originality of the seed, if you compromise the seed, it will lose its originality. And once the originality is lost, the glory dominion fails. The glory dominion fails. So the original plan, you know, of God was to, you know, man in his image, and then they were to continue like they But once Eve compromised, you saw that that plan was already, you know, under attack. It was already under attack. So what did God do? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he decided to come in immediately. And once he came in, what he did was to protect both the seed bearer and the seed by putting a mechanism in place whereby no matter how difficult it became for the woman, she had a mechanism that will look, you know, be able to identify the enemy and fight. Because uh -huh, it says, and now we put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God, you see, the enmity between the woman and the devil is not ordinary. God himself was the one that orchestrated it. He put something in the woman, and he put something in the enemy that causes them never to be friends. How did I come about this? When I was growing up, I just discovered women go through a whole lot. They go through a whole lot. Satan is so deliberate about fighting them. And I was wondering why. And God took me to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He said, that's one of the reasons that the woman goes through a whole lot. That's one of the reasons. There are many other reasons, but for this purpose, what he does is that since she's the seed carrier and he wanted to make sure that seed was defiled, in order to protect the seed. So um, I don't know if it sounds nice, but so that some of your suffering is also a good one, just <laughs> to make sure that the seed is protected. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Whatever challenges you're going through, just know that you are under threat, you're under attack because of who you are and what God has made you. So that enmity, so whether it's an idea, and when we say woman here, it could mean also the church, the body of Christ. There's an enmity between us and the devil that we just never, is never going to end, between her seed and the seed of the enemy. So God didn't put just the enmity between the woman and the serpent, even their seed. So as the seed keeps producing, that is how over the years that enmity will continue for generations. And even when you have an idea, a concept that is from the Lord, whether it's children, whether it's ministry, Satan will fight it. It's already, you know, so if you have this at the back of your mind, I think you will cry less. Because a day won't come whereby everything will just be fine. You want to start ministries and then Satan will celebrate you. He won't help you put up the posters. It's never going to happen. Are you understanding me? Even, <laughs> Hallelujah. It's never going to, it's never, I, I think for me, with that mentality at the back of my mind, I, I know that times as a human being I get discouraged, but I just know it's a process, it's something that's been engineered and put by God for protecting the seed. So I, I, it's, I know that warfare is the pathway through which we have protection for this seed getting destroyed. So quit getting discouraged by warfare, Amen. I don't know if that's a good message. I think it's better to just tell people, it's going to be well, it's going to be well. There's no such, there's no such. Hallelujah. Once you are carrying potential, once you are carrying ability to continue, once you are carrying grace, whatsoever you are carrying that is in form of a seed that will express glory, Satan will fight it. So receive this, um, you know, this um, grace at the back of your heart, at the front of your heart, above you, beneath you, anywhere, you know, as you journey on that, you know, it's a war. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare. That means we are in a war. I know some of you would rather, like, we don't say this kind of things. Ah, we, do, you know, do you know what we are going through? You are now telling us. Do you know what we are going through? Even what you are going, going through is part of the war. Search the scriptures. Any of the great men and women you have found in scriptures that became anything, they went through the pathway of warfare. It was to make sure that the seed was preserved. So it's, our originality is lost in the place of compromise. And I don't know what your compromise would be. When I say compromise, I don't want you to start thinking of, um, you know, sexual intercourse, you know. Um, I think 
I, I want to trust God that we are above that now. Amen. But just in case you are fornicating, you are committing adultery, you are stealing, you are compromising the originality of the seed. Amen. So, but the compromise I have my eyes on tonight is from Ruth chapter 1, the story of Ruth and uh, Naomi. Amen. For Ruth and Naomi, the war on the seed was what led to, you know, Satan killing about three males just to make sure that that seed does not proceed out of that lineage. So first off, you know, he goes to, um, you know, Moab to seek for bread. And then there um, he dies. His first son dies. His other son dies. And then this woman called Ruth, she decided not to compromise. So I'm saying, that's why I'm saying the compromise I'm talking about may not be for the regular sin we're talking about. She had suddenly discovered that in order for her to be able to produce and sustain seed, there was a woman that she needed to follow. Somebody was carrying the lamp. Somebody was carrying the light. So in, you know, being involved in warfare, one of the things God will do, apart from giving you revelations, he will give you someone like a discipler, someone like a guide, who once you follow the person, you will enter into your purpose. But meanwhile, while you're starting, you may not know exactly that this is the end game of what God is set to do. Am I talking to somebody? There will always be a Naomi around you. Someone who you could say, because I called it a compromise because at the end of the day, it was very easy for, it was very easy for Ruth at that point to compromise like offer. There was a revelation she had received. And that revelation is that this woman's God is my God. This, uh -huh, the Bible says, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee. In order to be able to produce seed and become what she was ordained to produce, because the enemy had succeeded in killing about three males already. And this woman, this king's arrow, this one, if I follow her, this, just this one, all I know is that don't stop me. Don't, I, don't tell me to go back. You say, for whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy God will be my God, and thy people will be my people. Amen. Amen. So there are some of us that, because of the intense warfare around us, what God will do is to raise someone around you. And once you follow that person, you will enter into the place that God has ordained for you. And that's why some of you are in King's Arrow, some of you are in, you know, tribe of the marketplace, some of you are in the different fellowships that you have found yourself. Because the warfare around your family, the warfare around, you know, the things um, that Satan has been able to destroy so much around you. And the truth is that you are the one man standing, and that whole generation is waiting for you. Imagine if Ruth had refused to follow Naomi. When she followed Naomi, she journeyed with Naomi, and then... Because when we talked about movements earlier on, you know, Elimelech moved down to where he moved so that the seed could come forth. But of course, Satan succeeded in killing. He just slay, slay, slay. And then the only one person that was now carrying the light and the hope of that seed of the Messiah was this woman. The movement of Elimelech was, you know, to bring um, root into her full ordination. Just like we said, our host came here so that some of us, we pick the light and shine. And she was able to understand and she followed through with instructions. When a man wants to succeed in warfare and breaking forth into glory is a man or a woman that keeps to divine instructions. If you are the type that you know, you are used to flinging instructions or you don't know when the instruction that is carrying life comes to you, there will be so many losses. Am I speaking to somebody? You know, just imagine if she just like off. I was like, okay, we love you so much, but this is just the end of the story. You know, it, the two of them started initially. And then they got to a point where it was only Ruth that was on the journey. She stayed. And in fact, she had to, at a point, with all due respect, talk to the mother-in-law, please, stop this going back, this whatever. Can you just leave me alone and set on a journey? You are my compass. Can we move? Hallelujah. So even in this meeting, and subsequent meetings, there'll be many instructions that God will give that will guide people into breaking forth the things that God has prepared for them to become. And so she follows through, and we know the story. And that reminds me, when I was preparing for the message, the Lord said there are some people that need to relocate in order to find their spouses. Amen. 
It may not be for everybody. But you know she had to move. And not just any kind of spouse. The spouse that will bring forth the seed. When she relocated, we know the whole story. How she gave, married Obed. And then at the end of the day, Obed became the great um, grandfather of, you know. In that lineage, that was, you know, the, the, the lineage of Jesus Christ. And Ruth was one of the five women that made it in the lineage of Jesus. You know, there were just five women with strange stories. Hallelujah. Ruth with the Moabites that God has said, don't allow them to come into my congregation. But she broke protocol. She decided, you see, when the seed is going to survive, it's an ability for you to know how to break away from protocols and traditions when you need to. There are some things that, that's why I call it, a, you know, apart from a compromise, the seed must be ready to take risk. You must be ready to take risk. You imagine she could have walked into Moab and they would have stoned her. So don't allow her to come into our congregation. But do you know by mere, um, for the, by the mere fact of the fact that, uh, of the of reason of the fact that she was so determined, she was so trusting, she had reconnected herself, you know, to um, Naomi so much that by the grace of God, she was, her tribe, her lineage had changed. It wasn't when she entered into the land of Israel, you know, right from where she was, that the shift has taken place. That was another movement, wasn't it? We're talking about movements. I pray that you'll be able to move into the thing that God has ordained for you in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes your, your, your Obed, you know, um, is it Obed that is his name? Boaz. Boaz, thank you. Your Boaz may not be in Moab. <laughs> so sometimes just the mere fact that you agree to relocate. You're welcome, servant of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's for Bridget, I did that too. So the way you are looking at me, Bridget is my daughter. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. It's my son. <laughs> so by just that main movement, she changed her tribe. She changed her location. She changed her mindset, like you were saying in the morning. She was like, hey, don't stop me. I found my life. I found, and then at the end of the day, we saw what came out of it. So you will find that the orig originality of the seed, our originality is lost in the place of compromise. She didn't compromise by becoming, by, you know, staying a Moabitess. She had changed, God had given her a new identity through her mother-in-law. You know, by reason of, you know, but she refused to offer compromise and stayed back. I don't know what area of compromise you are involved in, but I can assure you, you will lose the seed. You will lose the seed. She refused to compromise. She said, I'm an Israelite. Ah, by reason of marriage, you're my mother-in-law. Don't stop me. Let's just go on our journey. And then she breaks protocol. She breaks even the, rule, the, the laws that God put in place. She broke it. Hallelujah. Amen. To break forth into what is the dimension of glory God has prepared for you, you must open up your heart to the place where you are ready to take divine risk. Trust God for the instructions he has given that will catapult you beyond where you are right now. Amen. Amen. And I know that some of you here tonight, God has spoken to and you are afraid to move because of tradition. That's why I love these five women in scriptures. Who broke through traditions? Was it Ruth that broke through from being a Moabitess? Or was it, you know, um, Rahab that had not just a reputation, she had, you know, the, the employment as one that, um, you know, was giving services to men. But do you know the minute she heard the testimony of the Israelites, the Bible says she said, our hearts melted. And you know what? She took a decision. She said, I'm going to become an Israelite. And because she took that decision, God ordered the foot of the spies. Meanwhile, everybody was saying, you harlot, you harlot, we want your services. She was still, oh my God. While she was doing all of that, God had already changed her lineage from an ordinary one to one of those that we carry the Messiah. If you check scripture, she also made it into the lineage of Jesus Christ. There are some of us that are so traditional in our thinking. We are so traditional in our mindset, and we are, we, we are so fixated where we are, so that when God is speaking, we are unable to. We are unable to. She, it, was, it wasn't that she had seen this God. She only heard a testimony. And I don't know, it must have been from one of her customers. Hmm. 
Do you know what is happening? A group of Israelites, they say, they've opened the Red Sea. Uh, you know how people exaggerate. They'll say even the Jordan, the Black Sea, all the seas are open. And she'll be like, okay, really? And she'll suddenly be like, wow, is this the person I'm... Something just resonated within her. This is the person I'm looking for. And she made up her mind and God directed. There was just one. No matter where you are on the surface of the earth, if your heart is crying for God, he says, even when I went to the depths of hell, he was there. Nothing is hid from his eyes. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as your heart is genuine, he will locate you. Distance, you know, where you are, it's not a barrier. At the back of the mountains, is there. And God located her. And then you know the rest of the story. And then she became, she, she's in that lineage too. Oh my God. I, I, this God is amazing. See, when you don't compromise, when you take risk, your glory will certainly break forth. We're talking of magnificent glory. There's something that brings out the glory. I, there's something that brings out the glory. Our originality is lost also in the place of competition. You know, many times I just discovered people can't be themselves. That's why I love the testimonies that Anguli gave. And then, you know, Emmy was speaking about too. And they were just bold about it. They were not ashamed. They are not in competition with other women's sizes of breasts. They are not in competition with other women's sizes of boots. Hallelujah. And you will find many women lost in competition all their life. Their original self never manifests. And once that happens, you cannot bring forth anything. There are so many fakes around. You want to be like this, you want to be like this, you want to be like that. But do you know this woman, once they trace their way to the Lord, more, uh, what's her name? Um, Ruth discovered her original personality. How she, when she met her mother-in-law, she just knew this is me. This is me. I see a reflection of who I was supposed to be in this woman. And then she followed. Or is it Tama who fought for the seed? I told you that it's a war about the seed. She fought for the seed. The enemy made sure killed her husband, killed the, the, the assistant husband, killed the assistant of the assistant husband. And then the father in law was like, oh, no, I'm going to lose all my sons because of this woman. Hallelujah. And then she does up a strategy. You know the story. At the end of the day, she has twins. And from that lineage of Judah, the Messiah breaks forth. Are you seeing the story of this woman who are ready? They are just, they are ready to make sure they keep to their, the original thing that God made them. A lot of things try to compromise them, but they broke out of it. You remember Mary Magdalene? The Bible says, in fact, her, her nickname was the woman out of whom seven devils came, came out. That was her tag. Through, even when, it looks like, even when Jesus began his ministry, ended it, that became her name. She said, Mary they say, which one? Uh, you don't know that one that they casted seven devils out of that. That's your shouting that day. <laughs> Hallelujah. But do you know in all of that, the Bible said to anyone who is forgiven much, they love much. When it came to love, there was no other person that loved as much as her. She had been forgiven so much, she loved the Messiah so terribly that at the end of the day, even when the Messiah had died, she followed him to his tomb. And then she came there very early in the morning and was like, excuse me, sir, where have you kept him? I want his corpse, dead or alive. Just give, it, give him to me. Do you know <laughs> the love that she carried was so intense that at the end of the day, he had to break protocol and show himself to her in a form that ordinarily none should have seen him. There are, there are places, there are things that, don't, that, that God cannot reveal to you if you don't, you know, manifest some form of love. You know, the love she had had made her maybe sleep around with so many men she now got possessed and all of that. But it was a distortion of her originality. And when she met the Savior, her original being came out. There's something inside of you that except you begin to manifest that thing, that grace, a lot of things will not break out for you and for your generation because what's tied to your generation actually emanates from you. Hallelujah. She said, give, it, give him to me dead or alive. And that's why you find some sisters in church who are like Mary Magdalene. They're like, ah, brother, so so. They say he gets angry. Oh, don't worry. He'll soon be fine. He's part of the body. Even if he's smelling, he's fine. I'm just okay with it. You know, by then Jesus would have been smelling, but she loved him all the same. Smelly Jesus, clean Jesus. I love them like that. 
And that's when the, the, true, the true assignment that God created her for began to break forth. So when we don't compromise, when we are not in competition, many times you find, you know, people trying to outshine each other. You will find that there's a grace that only you can operate in. But if you abandon it and start competing with, another, with other people, that thing will be lost. And when we say competition, normally the average church person won't say, I'm competing. You won't even know until you just discover that, you know, um, many times you're in your head you have a mindset of this is how I want to be, or well, if this is how it's done, there's an original pattern with you that once you do it, you will find that the blessing and the glory will flow through you. You know, women, I, I don't know, I think I've forgotten the name of the author. But he said, basically, if I say it, you will know who I'm talking about. That men's brain are in boxes. They think, you know, what's his name? A man can, this is, this is, um, this is the marriage to Emmy. This is business. This is, this is um, you know, the parents. That's how their, their, their wiring is in boxes. So they can fix it. That's why they are vision-minded. They can put their mind on just one thing. And that's why a man can, unfortunately, just sleep with a woman. And then that's all. There's no other emotional attachment. It's, it was one box that was at work. But it's said that the woman's brain is like a mesh of wire. Everything is connected to everything. The children are connected to the husband. It's connected to the business. It's connected to the in-laws. Everything is connected. And women, I think we can identify with it. And that's why some days, you know, when it's time for fellowship, if you understand what I mean, is it not you that said this thing in the afternoon? I said, are you remembering still? If you know what I mean. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's all connected together. Everything. You can't separate this one from that one. Why? You know, it's not a disadvantage. But the truth is that there's only one personality that can, that can sort you out. And it's very unfair for you, we women, to hang your life around a man, thinking that, is that your husband that should be your, you, you know, he's the lover, he's the friend, he's the brother, he's the caretaker, he's the, how, he's, you, the person will collapse. And I discover many times that women are expecting so much from their spouses. And when the man doesn't meet up to that expectation, they feel disappointed. They feel they've married the wrong person. The truth is that you didn't marry the wrong person. The truth is that your expectations are too high. No human can meet it. Woman, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The way some people are stroking their beard, I didn't. I, <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I don't know. It was a, a discovery. You know, I discovered by myself. You know, um, who was it? They said discovered River Niger. I discovered myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I just, ah, I am, I, I, you know, my husband comes home and I'm not looking happy. I expect that he should know what made me unhappy and then he should know what to do about it. And that's not fair enough because he's not around. He was not around. And even if he was around, even if he now says, oh, um, what's happening to you? Then I'm like, he didn't lower his voice very low when he was saying it. He should have asked it. You understand what I'm saying? He just asked it casually. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, there's no human <laughs> that can meet up to your one person's expectation. All, that space is God's space. So, you know, what? because my husband is a medical doctor and he's absolutely busy. He, he's, he's blessed with grace to work and he loves work. When he used to work, sometimes he can, he can see up to 100 patients a day. He can do up to eight, seven, ten surgeries in a day if you leave him. So is that the kind of person that will finish from, you know, the hospital? And then you're in one corner and you're waiting to, you may, maybe immediately you hear the knock and you're like, <laughs> ah, excuse me, hey, Jesus. <laughs> I had to discover myself, like they discovered River Niger, that... The, the depth of emotions I carry, eh? the depth of emotions I carry, they were too vast and they were too diverse. They were vast and diverse. Are you understanding me? Can the woman identify what I'm saying? They were vast and diverse. That one person who is a very busy human being, because if you leave me alone, if I'm in that mood, I expect that you should come 
Maybe join me in the crying. That's how we start. And then when we are done, you can now ask, what is it? And then you wait for me to calm down. And then when I've come, seriously. Do I have some weaknesses in the house? <laughs> so, and you, can, you can imagine, maybe for someone that is like, is prophetic, you, you feel that he should have downloaded it from that realm. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? He should be able to feel these things. With the feeler's anointing, he should be able to have located what caused the problem and if possibly bind the devil. But this one, he just came in and then he's asking for his food or something in a very casual manner, even though he saw that he didn't smile like before. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Woman, hey, let's see, let's grow up. Let's grow up. The truth is, if you keep at it, the reason I'm going at it, it looks like I'm just saying something to make us laugh. I'm not. If you keep at it like that, a time will come you will wear out the man, you will wear out yourself, and the reasons why God put the emotions will be wasted. I was discussing with, um, you know, Anguli in the car. I said one of the reasons God puts so many emotions in us women, and not just women, anybody that is, you know, um, in, has a grace for the prophetic. You will find that your emotions are like this, like when it's starting especially, the grace is starting this way, this way, and it's, your emotions are not your enemies. They are put there by God. The only thing God wants to do is that by his mercies, he wants to so deal with us to the extent that at a point our emotions merge with his own so that when he's sad, you can know by the feeler's anointing so you, when he's happy, you can know. So there's a major. It's not supposed to be used to, you know, keep malice or to make people feel bad or to make yourself feel, you know, or hype yourself, you know, whatever. Amen. So those emotions are not a waste. But you will find many times, you know, that some of us women here, we just find, why am I so emotional? In fact, at times you are even tired of yourself. Ah, why did I cry? I such a little thing. I just cried. And for some of us, it's not just crying. The emotions are actually a weapon. Say, so, okay, I will cry when, when this happens now. It's not, it becomes a weapon. It shouldn't be so. It's not like it's a waste. God also laughs. Jesus also cried. It's human to do all of those things. But the height of those things is that the mind of God is that even those emotions are channels through which God passes to bring forth messages, to bring forth, you know, his purpose, his cancer. Because sometimes he wants to speak. He doesn't use languages. It's through your emotions he will pass the weight of his, his heart. Sometimes it's joyful. You just pick it in the spirit. You just know that the spirit, the Bible says it's, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. If that was happening in heaven and someone is sensitive here, you will become joyful suddenly. It's for you now to download why there is joy in your spirit. So your emotions are not useless after all. They have their use. Am I talking to somebody? See, bring your emotions to the Lord. Any day you are sad, it's so simple. Lord, I'm not feeling so happy today. I don't know what's the problem. And do you know after a while, you'll be able to download. But I'm not excusing the men from like, oh, but you heard, you heard what mama said that day. Why are you sad? Why don't you to go to the Lord? No, that's, I'm not excusing. <laughs> I'm not excusing the men from carrying out that. I'm just saying because of the vast and diverse nature of our emotions, men can't handle it. One man can, are you listening? Maybe it's like a, a revelation for some of us. In fact, once you start crying, the average man just doesn't know what to do with you. Men, am I speaking the truth? <laughs> so your crying is more of like clogging up things. And it will look as if they are heartless. When they say, okay, can you just stop crying? Can you just stop crying? Let's stop. And you'll be like, you won't even allow me to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. They are practical by nature. They are vision, you know, um, oriented. They, are, they, they like to get at the root of something and do what. Meanwhile, we like to express and let it run through. Don't let me just run through with this thing and finish it. I feel better when I cry. And that's really for me, that's true. So if you must talk with tears, make sure you finish crying before um, they come around so that you can express yourself. Praise the Lord. So let's be sure that we are not in competition. We are not compromised. We, we are focused. And because of the diverse assignment that women have to carry out, many times you find that we women, we are unable to focus. One of the things that will help you as you war and protect the seed is an ability to have focus. 
That's what I love about that young ma lady called Mary. Do you know at that tender age, I don't know, that's why I keep saying, whichever I have the opportunity to preach this message, that it wasn't told to us where that vision took place. For all we know, it would have, could have been when she was grinding corn for her, her mom or her dad. It could have been on the street. It just said an angel encountered her, but she was so sensitive, she knew so much about the Messiah and the promises that you know, she was able to respond. And not just respond, be ready to take risk. You can see she, wasn't, she was ready to take a lot of risk, break her relationship, do a whole lot of things, so that the seed will be preserved. Hallelujah. There's always war on the seed. It just, you can imagine, I thought it would have been, you know, maybe a neater arrangement. God talks to Joseph and says, please, when you marry this lady, don't touch her. I'll just, I'll use her womb for one year. But that was not the arrangement. It, was with, it came with a lot of risk. And there are many of us that God wants to put something in us that we break forth, bring forth the glory of God is in a risk, a place where nobody will understand and accept what you're going to do, you know, but you know what you have heard from the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? And that was it for this young lady. At the end of the day, you will find that God could use her mightily to his glory. So we must receive grace to focus. Receive grace to focus. Receive grace to focus. Amen. Looking on to who? Are you sure it's Jesus or your husband or your job? Amen. The author and finisher. Why would you say you should look on to Jesus? Because there are many things to distract us. Too many things to distract you. And some of the things that distract us are actually legitimate. It's a question of bringing balance. A woman who will make impact is a woman who is able to strike a correct balance between job, husband, um, you know, if, and if you are not married, wheresoever you find yourself, be able to strike a balance. Don't let anything suffer at the expense of the other. And the only way you can truly strike a balance is actually to bring yourself to the master to evaluate you every once in a while. Take yourself for evaluation. Lord, how am I doing? And that's what happened in the book of Revelation. There was an evaluation of the churches. You, you are doing this. You, you are doing that. Now, if you are not good at evaluating, because to evaluate, you need to sit under the Holy Spirit and allow him to give you a situation report, an annual performance or quarterly report of yourself, you need to go there. And, you know, the truth, some of us are afraid of facing the truth. We don't want to hear. And if, if someone tells us, we're like, oh, no, 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 please, I don't like hearing negative news. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I used to tell some of my daughters, if you are the type that don't, you cannot assess yourself, take yourself to someone to assess you, someone around you. Amen. Take yourself to someone. And that's why we have disciples, we have mentors, we have fathers who watch over us, who can say, um, you know, present yourself. I have a son who will say, Mommy, you have never told me anything that I did wrong. I say, well, the, the occasion has not come yet. And that was it, actually. When the time came, I had to tell him, no, you can't do this. This is your deed is wrong. If there's anyone here, you find it difficult to take corrections. You find it difficult, you know, to adjust when you've been given directions. You will not go far. Amen. If there's any such, and I know there will be one or two here. Amen. You just find it difficult. When they tell you, they correct you. I didn't know that was my problem initially. When my father will correct me, I'll be like, you, you shout too much. I don't like people shouting on me. When you want to correct me, just sit me down and tell me. Why was you? And I'll talk and talk and talk. And because he was my father, I think he could just like, mm. because they were afraid of my tears. He could feel a bucket. Hallelujah. I had a crying ministry. <laughs> so I got married. <laughs> are there some of my mates here? <laughs> the tears are just somewhere here. You know, some people say it comes from, it's far. It doesn't come out on time. But my own is somewhere I can blink and it's rushing like a bucket. Why are you looking at somebody? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when I got married, you, you, you know the first three, four years of marriage, how it's like, wow. I would cry and cry. And sometimes my mother would come and say, God, you are still crying. Ah, you are such a foolish girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that drove me to the arms of the Lord. Oh, God, oh, Lord, I'm so, Mama says I'm foolish. I need wisdom. And, you know, a whole lot of people testify these days that, oh, mama speaks with a lot of wisdom. I didn't start like that. Amen. I was very, very foolish. And he expressed himself in anger, in crying, in unreasonable talk, in nagging. He expressed himself in so many ways. If you nag so much, you cry so much, you get angry so much, there's a definition for you. It means that you are actually 
you know, um, a little bit of a clan of foolish people like I was until I decided that, look, I'm tired of this tribe. Amen. You need to be hard on yourself. Amen. Some of us are too soft on ourselves. Say, look, don't worry. You are just, people just don't understand you. Your husband is a very difficult man. I'm, I'm not saying some men are not difficult. But do you know you can, in the midst of anything, like a big girl, do you know she had a foolish husband? It was not that, you know, it was a testimony that, um, you, it was in anything the Bible records is true. His own foolishness was so great that the Bible, his name was, he, not only he was foolish, the Bible says, as his name is. So I don't know whether he had another name. Maybe his name, let me not call anybody's name now. Maybe his name was so, so, and so. But because of his foolish acts, the Bible now said, as he is. So at the point, nobody knew his original name. His name became foolish. But do you see how wise that woman was? She could preserve you know, the originality of why God put her in that marriage until, you know, at the end of the day, the man died, and then within 10 days, she was married um, to the king. Hallelujah. So no matter the situation, because there are some of us sisters here, maybe it's happening with you now, you are in a difficult marriage. Are you going to stay there and, and you know, just complain all your life or find a way around it like a big girl? What did a big girl do? She had a stingy husband. So what did she do? She could end with her hands. When she needed to visit David, she carried things with her own hands. Because if you take Nabal's things, he counts. He will know. No, how do, is, that, is that not the Bible says so? It's called, if you take anything, he knows. So it, no matter how difficult your situation is, yeah, Abigail made haste, took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of patch corn and 100 costas of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. Do you, that's her kekena pepper or maybe her Mercedes Benz. She, was, she even had a car. If, you, if God has given you a ministry and you want to run with it, even if you find yourself in a difficult situation, receive grace and wisdom to do what you need to do. Everything that's working around you, you know, sometimes they are geared to make you lose out. They are geared to make you, you know, fail. But the grace of God can be on your life no matter where you find yourself. Remember, the war is against the seed. And there's a seed inside of you. A bigger seed was that she was the wife of a king. And then there were these things that was just warring against her all her life. Amen. Hallelujah. Because some of us just feel, we, are, we came to this meeting, some of us filled with regrets. Like, why did I marry this man? The only mistake I ever made in this life was I met so and so. And now his name is, he's my husband. You, when you are alone, you just complain, you weep, you cry. It can be for the men too, you're saying that. It doesn't matter the situation you find yourself. Even if your marriage is difficult and complex, in it you can still break out. Amen. I'm not saying walk away from the marriage. I'm saying the glory of God can still break out in your life. Because for some, we sing that song all our life, and then that is it. That's where we stop. That's not your story in Jesus' name. So even with difficult marriages, you know, God's grace and glory can break out of you. So the seed must be preserved. Amen. I'm trying to um, wrap up now. We need sensitivity to the Holy Ghost in order to have insight on what to do part time. You need sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. You need sensitivity to know, to explain your situation. There was a man in John chapter 9. The Bible says he was born blind. Do you know some of our situations is an orchestration from the Lord? It's not even Satan. How can somebody be born blind? If it was in this generation, you know, I, I, I've stopped having children, and I give birth, for example, now to a blind child, they'll be like, ah, this is, this is a clear sign. Some will say, maybe it's not even the man's child. This is punishment. Others will say, ah, does he run in their family? It must be. They ask, they say, who committed sin that this man was blind? They say, and Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was born blind from his bed. And his disciples asked him, say, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? There are things that happen to you, and it will look as if humans have an explanation. What's the answer that Jesus gave in verse 3? Hallelujah. What's the answer Jesus gave in verse 3? He says, neither had this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. There's a glory and there's a walking that comes out of the fact that, you know, um, 
the difficult situations around you, God will bring them forth. I don't know what's happening around you. But don't always feel it's seen. Or sometimes it's not generational. It's that God's glory is going to break out in your life. And I believe that's for somebody here tonight. That thing, that difficult thing, that delay. Imagine he was blind for so many years. It wasn't for one year, for two years. That man was close. To, I don't know the, his age, but I think he must have been above. This, because his parents say he's of age. Ask him. He's of age. Ask him. So that complex situation, that never-ending situation, like you, you can't seem to see your tomorrow, this and this is, is happening or that is not happening around you, is for the glory of the Lord. And at the end of the day, may God give us insight to be able to explain our reasons, I mean our seasons in the name of Jesus. And as a woman, for you to become all that God has ordained for you, ensure that you know the season that you are in. If you don't understand your seasons, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Amen. If you're a young lady, maximize that time. If you're a married woman with little children, maximize that time. If you're pregnant, maximize that time. And if you've given birth, the kind of, you know, I had my last, um, when my last son went into secondary school, just as one, um, he's now 13, I just then discovered suddenly, I started getting invitations to minister outside Otuku. I said, okay, really? Meanwhile, all this while I was like, whichever Satan is, whichever devil is holding my pathway, I, I bind you. I bound and bound until the season came. The season came. I have six children, by the grace of God. Uh, oh, why Jesus? Is it a bad thing? <laughs> okay, six boys, Bridget says. Six boys. And you know, you, you, your first ministry starts in the home. You really can't run ministry effectively if you end up saving the world and the lives of your children are in jeopardy. You now raise, you know, you, because you left them for so long, they now, all kinds of people, God forbid, um, you know, people of the world, cultists, this, that. So the Lord was deliberate. It was only after then I saw why that I needed to stay with them, brood over them for that season until it was time when the last one went to secondary school, then suddenly started seeing invitation to this, that, 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 hallelujah. Meanwhile, all this while, I was preaching. And he was looking as if, in fact, it wasn't that some invitations were not even coming, but suddenly it just shut down. He said, mommy, mommy, come. And then suddenly, oh, that program is not taking place again, and so and so. I'm sure I'm talking to somebody. Amen. I'm sure I'm talking to somebody. Sometimes it's not that you, 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 you know, it's just not the time. The season has not come. But again, for some, the season came and they didn't know. May your season come and you, we, it, it's not that you didn't recognize in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The season came, not just that I knew, my husband also knew, and he kept encouraging me. And um, by the grace of God, um, by his mercies, we are not where uh, we were before. Um, God's grace and God's mercy has brought us to where we are now. And by his help, I'm just happy that a um, um, man of God is here. He came to, or to go to um, preach at a meeting at um, Apostle Tony's place. And then, you remember you came to the house, we're sitting outside. Maybe you won't remember. And you said, I see you in Abuja. I see you in Abuja. That was years ago. Do you remember? And when you said that, I said, amen, amen. But in my mind, I was like, mm, mm, okay, okay. Mm. So, you know, when you said he was coming, I was like, okay, thank God. Although last year I came, no, this year I came to Abuja. But I know that this particular coming is actually, you know, the, another phase of something opening to me. You may not need to know the details. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A word is spoken over you is as if it's, you know, taking time to come to pass, please be patient. Because sometimes the seed takes time to germinate. The seed takes time to, you know, go through process and become. And sometimes God is deliberate about hiding the seed. Amen. He will hide the seed. What do farmers do when they put seed? Do they, apart from, I don't know if any grain they scatter on the ground. They dig a bit. Sometimes God digs a place like you are in a hole and just covers you up for a while. But when your time to shoot forth comes, nothing can stop you. Even the birds of the air, they can't stop you. 
The hardness of the ground, the situations around you, they can't stop you. The Bible says, like a tree, like a, is it a root out of dry ground. No matter how dry the ground around you, suddenly you will begin to break out because there is, there is life-giving power in the seed. The seed does not, it doesn't die. It doesn't have ability to die. The only thing that can happen, it can be paused for a while. When it's in the wrong location, maybe with the wrong person or in the wrong place, it can be paused for a while. But when the time comes, no matter how dry the surrounding is, it will break out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that tonight, there are some people that God is going to call forth from that dry place in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know what your dry place is, but God is calling you forth tonight and breaking out the limitations around you. Have you seen a, 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 a plant come out before, out of the ground? It literally breaks the ground. And that's what's happening, going to happen with some people tonight. There are some things around you that seems to have covered you up, but there's going to be a crack around you by the power of God so that the blade, it may look like a small thing, but the blade will shoot forth. In fact, as I'm speaking, there's a weakness in somebody's spirit. It's like, oh, you are talking about me. You're talking about me because the truth is that th something has, you know, God was even deliberating covering you. It wasn't the devil. But you are going to break forth and the tender, shoot, tender blades you bring out soon and very soon, it will blossom into the fullness of the tree that God has ordained for it to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so tonight, God is calling women out of depression. There are some of you here tonight, no matter what you do, you found that you've been in depression. And because everybody says Christians shouldn't be depressed, so you can't tell anyone. But I've realized that one of the warfare on the seed is death. Is death. And it doesn't look at your age. Oh, this person is so small. Let me, you know, Jesus was just, I don't know how many months he was when they killed so many babies just because of that one. There is war on the seed. And Satan doesn't look at, oh, I'm fragile. Don't you, can't you say I cry easily? Leave me alone. No. But in fact, recently, I just discovered that one of the warfare that is upon the seed is the fact that the spirit of death has been hovering over people. And there are many that Satan has been putting in their heads that they should commit suicide. The last meeting we had, when the Lord spoke to me, I thought it was one person. When we called out for those who are having suicidal feelings, they came out more than 20. I was like... And then when I discussed with someone, they said, yeah, the reason people don't open up is that people stigmatize them. If you are in that condition, please, it's a war against you because you are the seed, you are carrying the seed. Don't be ashamed to speak out. We will pray for you. And those of you that, you know, facing one manner of depression or the other, the Lord is going to set you free tonight in the name of Jesus. Because the thing is that when you are depressed, you have inability to see. Depression shuts down your eyes. You can't see the visions of God anymore. And it's difficult to hear God when you are depressed. Your spirit works better when there is a soaring, there is a, a breaking forth of God's grace upon you. A breaking forth of God's unction upon you. So anyone suffering from depression tonight, we declare freedom unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so in a moment of time, we'll just wrap up this session. Can you rise to your feet while we pray? Just rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. God has kept you up until now, and the same God will keep sustaining you. One of the things about the seed is that it's indestructible. There's something inside of you. Despite the warfare around you, Satan will not be able to destroy you. And no matter what you've gone through, I tell you, for some of you, this meeting is a night of crowning. God will crown, he will enthrone you and then crown you, put a crown on your head. Or before we go on, even if it's just one person, I would just like to pray. If you are here, you've been fighting depression. Some is just from things around, but some is a spirit that is projected into you. Especially for the ladies. If you are here, just come. We'll pray with you. There are many other ministrations going to go ahead this night. But if you are here, you're just having issues with depression. Can you come forward? I know that the king is here tonight. And those are part of the world face against the seed. And the mind of the enemy is to bring you to that place where, you know, you just find that you, as if you are worthless. If you are the one, please come out. We'll just pray quickly with you. 
or maybe you should just raise your hand where you are because of time raise your hand and we'll pray with you raise your hand is is there any such person in the house any such person okay we'll just pray with you we'll pray for our sister is there any such any other person I want you to understand that the warfare against the seed is intense and there are many speakings that the devil will speak to you feelings of depression worthlessness you know announcing your past to you it's all gone tonight just lift up your hand my sister may the hand of God come upon you wherever you are I ask that the spirit of God will bring assurance to your spirit let him bring assurance to your spirit. The word of God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And it is in him to make you become all that God has ordained for you to become. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we lift up our hands? I feel that the people God wants to give. You know, from what I saw... In the dream that I said, there are people God wants to bring into their ordination. Lift up your hand and just appreciate the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There is someone here that God is giving you a walk with women. He's giving you a walk with women and he has spoken to you, but you're not sure. You're just not sure. And the reason he's calling you into that place is because there's a vacancy. And God wants someone to fill up that place. If you're the one God has been speaking to about a walk with women and you've been feeling like you cannot, you cannot. Can you just lift up your hand? We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Just as I'm speaking, I feel the hand of God upon you. I feel the hand of God upon you. Our sisters, just step forward. Your stepping forward is a weakness. You're just going to boldly come forward. In fact, your stepping forward is like an ordination for you. Can you come forward? Just as you're stepping, just know you're stepping away from doubts, from fear, from doubts, from fear, into the place, into the place. God is saying start, and you're like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. Lift up your hand. It's part of what this ministry is called to do. That women, people will enter into the place of their calling, their ordinations. You know what I tell women that do this? Except there's a date God has given you. Once you live here, begin. In fact, that's what we do. We have a, I don't know what to call it. Sometimes we are giving keys. And this key is to unlock you. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, I ask that your hand will rest upon this ones now. Your hand will rest upon this ones now. Your hand will rest upon this ones now. I see the hand of God upon you. I see the hand of God upon you. Sisters, just be sensitive. Is an ordination going on? Is an ordination going on? Jena kapozi kartalaba. Rebababa sakatomi na kapozi kebashanta. The doubts that you have had is enough. God says, go forth in the name of Jesus. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Mani komba na kaposi kepai. Lende ni kapasa tala makapos kepa. Rekete kebo si kabashanta. Sisters, those of you in front, you don't understand the seriousness of what is happening. Do you know that one of the things, the warfare against the seed is to change its original purpose? And that's the reason why you see a type of it going on in the world. The GMOs, they're trying to take away the seed. Take away the seed. Everything that is original, they want to take it away. So much warfare. Sister God's hand is upon you. Mani kama na kaposi kaba. Redegegebo si kaposhanta. And guess what? A part of the work to restore us to the original mandate is given to women. A very strong part of that work. And that's why I'm so glad that, you know, Damola is here supporting the wife very strongly. A very strong part of that work is given unto us women. Sister God's hand is upon you. Fear not, says the Spirit of the Lord. Fear not. I see God's hand upon every one of you in front. I can feel the hand of God. I can feel the hand of God. And uh, just maybe I'll come down, lay hands on you. What will happen is that the, 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 the scroll that is in your heart will begin to find expression. There's a scroll. There's a scroll. There's a scroll. There's a scroll. 
Mayana Kaposi Katalabaka, are you not struggles? Shemama Makasaka Telebakanta, Rebaka Papa Sakato. Oh, the Lord says there's one more person and you're doubting. There's one, who is it? Please, can you run forward? Go forth in the name of Jesus. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Malekeni masaka tole bakata. Reba baba baba kata la bakata. Reke nenge masi kata la bakata. I will just do maybe two more things so that others can come out. Just as I was laying hands on her, the Lord said, "It's not only women. There are some men that are supposed to kickstart something." And they've been afraid. They've been, they're like, they're not sure. Please, if, if there's such a man in the house, can you come? Can you come? Can you come quickly? Your own is long overdue. It's long overdue. It's long overdue. Your training period is over. Go. In the name of Jesus, and begin. The Lord will supply help, wisdom, and guidance in the name of Jesus. Mission you fought in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go, waste no more time. Go, run into the cornfields of the Philistine and set their cornstalks on fire in the name of Jesus. I hear all things are ready. All things are ready. All things are ready. Everything that you need is ready. It's ready. It's ready. Repand the sekapo shika basata. Me sekata kapo sekapo la basheta. If I have a name of sekapo le kembe laba. Sekapo sekato leba. If I pray for you, you can never. Please come. Is there any young man? Is there any young man? I had that weakness with someone. Is there any young man that? Is there any young man that is supposed to begin something but you are afraid? You are afraid. You are afraid. You are, afraid. You are unsure. I had a witness. Please don't step back. It's just because we are talking to women does not mean the men are not implicated. Does not mean the men are not implicated. Let's lift up our hand. The final prayer I'll pray. Okay. I don't know. He's, he's, I'm not sure he's the only person. You, you have begun to some extent. I know that um, you've begun to some extent. Father, I ask, oh Lord, there is a word one minister of God said, and I say it to you, he said, courage means to do it even when you are afraid. Receive grace. Receive courage. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. Go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Shema naka bosike tala bakata. Repa papa basa katala makante bosike ba. Can we open our mouth and begin to pray? There are some of us that the Lord wants to hand over a scepter of rulership. I don't know who the person is, but there's a scepter of rulership which will make you rule over the territories that He's handing over to you. It will make you rule over the territory that He's handing over to you. Can you lift up your hand? Yes, you are in the Lord. Yes, you are laboring. But what he wants to give you now is a scepter of rulership. A scepter. We have said there are people that are receiving crowns. There are people that are receiving scepters. And there are people that God is pouring forth oils upon them, separating them at this time. Mande si katalabakabalata. Manda baba baba se katala makaba. Repe pe 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 si kanta boshkeba. Repa baba baba se katala makaba. Repe de 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 se keba shakaba. Manta ta 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 kaba kaba. Repe de 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 se keba shakaba. E mane kapa se kapa ta kaba boshkeba sata. Repa baba baba e se kete kaba se kaba shata. Part of the warfare against someone here is that you lost the ability to hear. You were having dreams before. And now you no longer can see dreams. You no longer can hear at all. God wants to restore that to you. If you're in that condition, just lift up your hand quickly. I'll just pray that and then we'll be gone. You, you stop dreaming. You stop dreaming. You stop seeing vision. And it's not possible to join me without these things being stirred up and restored in your life. Sisters, if you're lifting up your hand, lift it up very well. Lift it up very well. 
Lift it up. It's a restoration. God wants to restore dreams and visions. When it comes upon you, you will know the next thing to do. Because the dreams are not just about you only. Your dreams and vision, you're actually carrying the mandate for some other people. Because if you don't see, many people will be trapped. Many people will be trapped. Many people will be trapped. Thank you, Jesus. Jena makapa sa kapaleda, repa pa 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 sa kanta la bakapai, manda da 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 ba sa kaposhe ke ba sata. Come on, just put your hands on your eyes uh, and one eye, one hand on your face and the other hand on your ear. You're going to have the hand of God come upon you. I'm praying for restoration now. I'm praying for restoration. You stop seeing, you stop hearing, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask so God. Keep me burning, keep me burning. That the ability to see visions, the ability to see dreams that were stopped, that dream, I ask that there be a restoration. A restoration now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're asking that you begin tonight. You will come back with testimonies tomorrow. Because God will begin to unveil to you again. Lord, I ask, O God, bring, O God, back the sights and the visions in the name of Jesus. Bring back the sights and the visions in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the help of the Lord be massive unto your sons and your daughters in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of Glory. I'm rounding up now. There's someone here, God gave you something to do, and you abandoned it for a long time now. The Lord wants you to begin them again. I don't know who is that person. Can you just come forward? He gave you an assignment. Some didn't begin at all. But there's some he gave, and they just abandoned it for a long time. Who is that person? Please come forward quickly. But the last person I'll pray for. Thank you. These are not the only persons. Please come out. Come out quickly. Lord, please lift up your hands. We're asking for grace. We're asking for grace. First, we'll ask for mercy. We ask for mercy for waste of time. But that's what this meeting is about. It's restoring lost mandates. The Lord restore you. Restore to you the grace and the vision. And the ability to carry out what God has asked you to do that you left behind. Let it rest upon you now in Jesus' name. Let it come upon you now in Jesus' name. I pray for speed in the name of Jesus. I pray for accuracy in the name of Jesus. I pray for the help of the Lord to be massive on you in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you leave this place, as you turn from here, may you become another man. May you become another woman. May help come for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you go back to your seats? Church, can you lift your hand and just appreciate God? Appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the Lord. Amen.